Most racing enthusiasts in the region have heard of it, but few have actually been there, know much about it, or experienced it firsthand. Tucked away in the woods, just to the west of Hibbing, Minnesota, lies the small community of Kelly Lake, a true gem of Americana, where rail cars meet race cars. First settled in 1892 as an equipment camp for the Swan River Logging Company, Kelly's Lake, as it was originally called, was officially established in 1907 as an unincorporated community. It soon blossomed into a railroad town that serviced the logging and iron ore industries. By 1930, it grew to over 1,500 residents and in time featured all the typical amenities of a much larger city such as a school, churches, grocery stores, bars, restaurants, and even its own post office. There was kids and there was people. That town was a railroad town and it was booming when we were younger. Industrial evolution and advanced technology caught up with Kelly Lake during the 1950s and the need for extensive railroad services in that particular location diminished. A slow decline of this once bustling boom town ensued and one by one almost all of its previously mentioned amenities were lost to economics, fire, and time. Kelly Lake was eventually annexed by the city of Hibbing and today it is estimated that its population is roughly half of what it once was. There was three bars and a couple of grocery stores and uh, a gas station and a mechanic shop. A lot more than there is now. Oh, we do, well, there ain't nothing now. No bars left, uh, no store left. One thing that Kelly Lake hasn't lost, however, is the overwhelming involvement of its residents in the sport of dirt track racing. Whether it's fans, crew members, sponsors, or drivers, this community has produced an extraordinary amount of racers, especially considering its relatively small population. There is just something special about Kelly Lake in regards to local racing. The motorsports atmosphere here can be electric at times, and during its zenith of racing activity, the energy in the air was palpable. Looking in any direction revealed a race car or hauler. Oftentimes, the wind carried the aroma and distant crackle of internal combustion. You could almost feel racing fuel running through the veins of this town. I only raced 24, 25 years, and it seemed like, I don't know, maybe they were racing before me, I, I don't remember, but when I tied it up, I looked around, there was a race car in every, every yard, it seemed like, and uh, it was exciting. I, I think we just, we all had the same interest, you know, and everybody that worked on race cars, you know, they, some, some guys came in and, you know, uh, they, they were pitting for this, Pete Wallers or uh, Danny Pierce or myself, and then they ventured off. You know, I had uh, like Bobby Carlson, you know, he used to help me a little bit and he used to help Pete, and well, he decided to race. Danny Pierce used to help Pete Wallers and he decided to race, and it just, it, it was like a tumbleweed, you know. Uh, Skinner Labarge, he, he used to help me, and 
And, uh, well, then he started racing, you know. Uh, Dan Lubovich actually was with Bobby Girardi for years. Uh, him and Thad Johannesson. Well, Thad went off the race. Uh, Lubo ended up buying my one of my first or second, third hobby stocks back then. I drove for him. Yeah, it, it was just a big tumbleweed is what it was. Saturday mornings during the summer, everybody had their garages open, working on their cars, and everybody would bounce from shop to shop and check things out. Uh, The centerpiece of Kelly Lake is obviously the lake itself, which features a well-groomed sandy beach on the west shoreline abutting Main Street and a fishing dock protruding from the east near what remains of the railway system. In winters past, a makeshift oval would often be scored into the frozen surface and some of the swampers, as they affectionately refer to themselves as, would hone their driving skills during the off-season by partaking in occasional off-the-cuff ice racing. When the snow wasn't flying, it was not uncommon to hear the loud roar of a race car or two being test ran up and down the streets in an effort to work out the bugs or break in a new engine. There have also been reports of race cars being raced around the lake for a preseason shakedown or as a means to settle a friendly grudge match. We used to race on that lake with cars. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, you, you don't want to push this thing too far, you know. Did you ever test run your car up and down the streets? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you ever? I wasn't the only one. That was like the other kids did, Bob too. Girardi's car was always good looking, and he would always shake the car down. And those, being a young kid, that was one of the most exciting things you could do is hear a car and then see it be Bobby G coming down the road, you know, right down through town. So it was awesome. I got hit by a broom racing around the lake in my hobby stock. He stopped me and I actually stopped. And he came out with the broom and was hitting me and with the broom. So, um, and another time, Davy Johnson, Kelly Laker, was a police officer at the time and he stopped me and he had a few kind words uh, that I shouldn't be running up and down the road with my race car. Every, every time we needed to test the car around the lake was uh, many times around from the north end to the south end, the south end back to the north end. Uh, a lot of a lot of people kind of enjoyed listening to the listening to the noise in the background around the lake, and there's a few people that didn't. And we had the HPD out here a few times, and you know, and there was no getting away from it because our numbers were on our car. You know, and I said, no, it wasn't me. Well, you are 37, aren't you? Well, yeah, I guess I am. Just and they they were good they were good about it. They just told us to tame it down. What about ice racing on the lake? There's reports that a lot of you guys used to race out on the lake when it was iced over. One o'clock every weekend on a Friday night, and that would be one o'clock a.m. to two o'clock a.m. after a Friday night, leaving uptown, and a Saturday night, one o'clock, two o'clock, and we had about eight to ten cars. We had a lake, uh, on the lake, we had a track plowed off and we had our own street cars out there. And I think that's where a lot of the interest might have came because we had so much fun out there. And all of us guys that were actually racing out there, they be, a lot of them became actually dirt car racers. And it, yeah, it was, that was the best part of probably my whole racing career was actually on a weekend in Kelly Lake and never Never got bothered by the by the cops or nothing like that. You can go by there two, three o'clock in the morning, and all you seen was headlights going around out there for hours. Yes, after the bars at at night, we had a racetrack plowed on the lake. So from the bar, we would race out here on the roads, and then we'd race out on the lake, and it, it was fun. Uh, and then we'd race around the lake in the summertime. You know, like we would work on our cars and stuff and we want to go test it out, we'd go down around the lake and then the cops would come out here. And they'd want to feel your motor, you know, it's like, well, we just had it running because we were setting the valves, you know. Well, somebody said you were racing around the lake. It wasn't me, it might have been somebody else, you know, so. Not only has Kelly Lake produced numerous racers, 
but it has also produced some of the most successful racers in the region. From pioneers such as Shadi Ruzic and Augie Musich to newcomer Addison Labarge, Kelly Lake is steeped in racing tradition. What is it about Kelly Lake that produces so many race car drivers? I don't know. Uh, probably Bobby Girardi was a pretty good, I mean, he was winning, you know. And he got a lot of people interested in it. A lot of people going after. But there were him. racers before Bobby too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, Half Lap Gibson was there and uh -huh. uh, Harry Menzer lived there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. No. I worked, raced, I lived there. You know. I, I don't think there's a garage in Kelly Lake that didn't house a race car at one time or yeah. another. Shaddy Rusich was the first one that I know of, and he was good. He was better than he, there's a guy that was better than he thought he was, I'll tell you. And I also married Wendy uh, Rusich, uh, Shaddy's daughter, and Shaddy also had race cars, you know, back in his day. Mm -hmm. So there was kind of an interest all the way through of the families and and we all kind of seemed like we liked the same thing that was going mm -hmm. on, so that, that helped that matters too. The current contingent of active racers has dwindled to merely a handful in contrast to the dozens of cars that could have been found nestled away in garages scattered throughout town at any one moment in the past. Nonetheless, the interest in racing still looms large in the hearts and minds of Kelly Lake's devout and faithful fan base. Various theories can be conjured up as to why this small community has been such a racing hotbed, but undoubtedly a major catalyst that helped spur Kelly Lake's interest in racing is none other than the legendary Hall of Famer Bob Girardi. His success on the track, as well as his friendly, helpful demeanor off the track, was a major influence that led droves of Kelly Lakers to congregate at the local racetracks on weekends. There's a lot to racing, and then if you can help somebody, you can get them there a lot faster. When I got started, actually, Bobby Girardi helped me out um, in my earlier years. Bobby and Gary Monroe had the car out in the slab all the time, so I'd hang around there, and I got a little interest in it, but never intended on racing. My dad would bring me up to the track, and we'd watch the races uh, up from the north end of the grandstand there. And, the Kelly Lake section back, actually was what it was back then. Bobby Girardi was probably the biggest influencer. We'd always go down to his garage on our pedal bikes and they'd be working on the cars. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, Bobby Girardi for sure um, started hanging out, you know, riding my bike down there when I was 10 years old and, and um, ended up being like a second family to me, you know, to this day. Influence with racing and, and, and not only with my life, I remember telling him once I was going to quit college and he both strangled me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely the influence. And I, th and I think most Kelly Lakers would say the same thing. You know, he had a lot of success when we were in our younger years and our teenage years. And, and then when he quit driving, he, there was no shortage of help coming from, uh, you know, coming from Tobacco Road. He was always around and, and uh, you know, traveling from garage to garage and encouraging us and kicking us in the butt when we needed it. And um, so definitely. Bob's unbridled passion for racing continues to this day, which is evident by his regular attendance at local racing events and his never ending willingness to engage in race related conversation. In doing so, he never fails to deliver an arsenal of great stories at the drop of a hat. Bob has won races and track championships all over the Northland, highlighted by winning the Red Clay Classic, the Thunder Bay Invitational, and two Labor Day shootout titles. Do you think there was a unique atmosphere in, in Kelly Lake? I do when all them kids were racing. Good feeling? I, 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 I tell you what, they made me proud. They did. I was happy living in Kelly Lake. I was happy. I was watching them young kids race. They all turned all good. And uh, they had sons that they can hand it to, which was even better yet. And uh, 
No, I, 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 the picture you can't, can't have it more perfect for me. Another notable asset to Kelly Lake was the late Jojo Terzic. Jojo owned and operated Terzic Market, where he supplied gas, groceries, and the highest quality meat products around. He sold the store in 1995 in an attempt to enjoy the retired life, but soon found himself working for Shane and Sons Gravel until his unexpected passing in 2013. Most, if not all, Kelly Lake racers had Terzich Market proudly displayed on their cars. Not only did JoJo's charitable nature find him sponsoring a fleet of race cars, but he also helped many down-and-out families with their fuel and grocery needs during difficult economic times. He supported all of us financially, um, a lot of support, helped it. he helped us out in a lot of ways. Um, I get to spend a lot of time with Jojo and, and Freddie and those guys traveling to races all over the place and yeah. You, you gotta mention Jojo. Jojo let us use his garage. I never had a garage. And uh, it took off from there. He was a good hearted guy. He was a fun guy. One more time for Kelly SD at 37. Seasoned veteran Kelly Esty has the longest and most decorated career of any Kelly Lake racer. Checkered flag waving to the side by for Kelly Lake, Minnesota's Kelly Esty. He has won 35 track championships, two Como Mod Series titles, and countless feature wins, including seven shootouts, two Governor's Cups, the Silver 1000, the Red Clay Classic, the Wazota Classic, the Topless Nationals, the Russ Larson Classic, the FYE Mod Nationals, Proctoberfest, and the Modified Race of Champions. At nearly 40 years behind the wheel and still going, he has inevitably been an inspiration to more than a few budding young drivers, not to mention fostering the careers of his two sons, Skeeter and Mac. Kelly is a member of the Superior Speedway Hall of Fame and destined to become a member at Hibbing as well. We all hung out in everybody's garage back then. It didn't matter if, you know, who had a car. I mean, we'd travel from garage to garage and we all had fun, you know. Probably would have never ever got into racing but Hibbing Raceway back in the day, uh, Donny Oz, I believe, was probably the, the starter of the hobby stock class back in the day. And it was just something real cheap to get into. And I, I bought my first, first hobby stock. It was a 68 Mercury Monterey, and I paid 50 bucks for it. I, I brought it home and we built our first hobby stock, and that's how I got started in 1984. Some lasted a little bit longer than others, and I happen to be one of them that probably has lasted longer than most. And and but that's that's all coming to an end here, near <laughs> near near future anyway. Who all influenced your racing career? Uh, probably my dad was the biggest one. Um, growing up, watching him win and working on his cars, and um, just being around it every weekend all summer long. Um, that's kind of how I got into it. They were all good. These guys were all good that were in Kelly Lake. There was a lot of drinking that went on back then too. Why no straight brim, Skeeter? No, I, I don't know. Not my style. Peter! Someone said you're running a Hornet this year. I am. Two. Outlaw Hornets. <laughs>